Let's discuss some other possible protocols. So I'm going to go back to the protocol manager. And instead of using a montage with no Z and no T, I'm going to use a Z stack with no T. So I can show you what's involved in that. So again, once I change protocols, I have to make sure I have the channels that I want. I'm going to add DAPI. I still don't want to do any time lapse. Uh, now you can see the montage is not enabled. I'm going to minimize this, and I'm going to expand the Z settings. Now, uh, let's find a region that's interesting for a Z stack. So I'm going to uh, be on the GFP channel, go to live. Um, let's see here. Let's go to a place that's a little bit more crowded. So how do we set up a Z stack? So there are several ways of doing this. Uh, we always want the use piezo engaged. And so the, the two ways of doing this are to use center and size or start or end. So in center and size, what we do is we set a given position as the center. So we move the piezo until we find where we think the center is. So for example, there, and then we set that as the center of our Z stack. We determine what scan size we want, and then we determine uh, what step size we want. And so for step size, we can either input a value for example, we may want a value of one micron. We can either input a number, which is less useful, or say auto step size, which roughly uh, acquires, uh, sets the step size to acquire something at kind of maximal Z resolution, which can come at the cost of significant bleaching in time. So I'm just going to take a one micron, uh, one for this de demonstration. Um, so that, that's one option for how we take this. Uh, the other option is to set the start and the end. In that case, what we do is we move the, the piezo down to the very bottom, set that there, that's where we're going to start, and we go to the top, set that there, that's where we're going to end. We can also, when we're in this mode, just move the start and end sliders, which are these green and red ones respectively, to mark the edges. If we were back in center size, we can adjust the band which we're going to image by adjusting that. So there's sort of several ways of setting this up. Once you have something set up, you can check where the center and the edges are to make sure you're happy with that. And we aren't going to use any montage settings. We aren't going to use any trigger settings or drift stabilization settings. Uh, one thing we can do, uh, but I'll, which I'll discuss in a, in a separate video, is apply three-dimensional deconvolution to this data set automatically at the end uh, of the acquisition. I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, there'll be a kind of an optional training video about that, but that is formally an option that we can take. So uh, once we have this set up, it's a Z stack, there's no time. If we hit acquire, it will take a Z stack there. There's one final thing actually, which is we can do for each Z point, acquire all channels. This will lead to uh, better registration uh, of the channels or uh, for speed, we can do each channel and then acquire uh, all the Z points for that channel. So this is much faster and that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm gonna hit the acquire. Um, when we're using this, you can see that it's acquiring all the Z points in one channel, all the Z points in another, and it's showing me each plane. If we switch to this display mode, it shows me a maximum projection. If we had had that live, it would have shown me a maximum projection live. If we switch to uh, this, it shows the different channels uh, and we can adjust different Z planes and see the different channels and the composite. Uh, this mode shows you the maximum intensity projection, as I said before. So you can see how this one, it's a combination of these two. So it uses the maximum intensity projection for each channel. This version shows you things in three dimensions. Uh, this is arguably not very three dimensional, but you can kind of look at this and you can do all these things live. Um, this allows us to reset the 3D view to its original state. This, if it's engaged and there's montaging, it shows things uh, in the montage, even if they haven't been stitched. I'm going to turn that off. And then this final view is a, is a sort of blend 3D view, which can sometimes be a little bit uh, more informative 
than this, which is a maximum uh, intensity projection three-dimensional mode. Uh, and again, you can reset the 3D by clicking here, or you can just go back to 2D, either single slices uh, with this one, or a maximum projection with this.